Good day. You are watching Let's Talk. I'm your host, Andy Asher. This is our newest show. You are watching only the second episode. We are about life, about living productively, positively, and happily. Sounds simple, doesn't it? But I wish it was. For me, every day, every week, is filled with downs and ups and ups and downs. It can drive a sane person crazy. Maybe that's why the entire month of May is devoted to mental health. We are going to talk about that in just a moment and hear from our renowned expert in the field of codependency. His name is David Essel. Well, I'll tell you, Mental Health Month, I mean, it's great that they're devo- that we're devoting that much attention to it, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, the, it, it's so close to me. In 1990, I had a failed suicide attempt. And in that failed suicide attempt, even as a counselor, you know, I wasn't aware of all of the challenges that I had covered up with alcohol. So I used alcohol as what many people do, medication. Uh, it was a way for me to survive with very deep clinical depression and anxiety until I reached a point where I tried to take my life. But that was a turning point, Andy. That was everything to me. You know, people talk about those points as being negative. It was the most positive thing in the world. It forced me to raise my hand and say, I need help. A lot more from David in just a moment. And. How about singer-songwriter Jewel and her 1995 debut, Pieces of You? All right, Jewel. Hi. Hi. Multi-award winning artist and mental health advocate. What's our drink here? Well, I think we have some mocktails. We're looking forward to trying this. Which dominated the charts with Who Will Save Your Soul? You Are Meant For Me. Foolish Games and went on to sell more than 12 million copies, making it one of the best-selling debut albums of all time. She grew up in a difficult childhood with poverty, abuse, homelessness, and she's been an advocate for mental health and wellness. Jewel founded the organization called Never Broken, which focuses on various issues including mental health and financial education, job readiness and wellness education. And speaking about mental health today, this has been one of the coldest, wettest winters and springs that I can remember, even though I try not to let weather affect my disposition or be depressing. You know the proverb, April showers bring May flowers, suggests that the rain that falls in the month of April helps to nourish the soil and prepare it for the growth of plants, leading to a blooming variety of flowers in May. So. It can be said that the rainy weather in April is essential for the vibrant and colorful blossoms that we see in May. This might be a good time to visit a local flower garden where you live. (laughs) And right now, we are going to speak more with David Essel, where he has helped thousands of people from around the world shatter the largest addiction known on Earth, a leader of positive thinking. David Essel. Well, you know, there is such a sense of shame about mental health problems. Um, So since you're so personally affected by it, uh, you can probably be a great person to ask about that. Yeah. Well, oh my gosh. You know, as men, forget about it. I mean, now it's changing, Andy. But, you know, for men back, you know, up until really about 2015 is when we started seeing more men come into our uh, clinical practice with depression, anxiety, PTSD, addiction, low self-confidence, low self-esteem, you know, everything. But we men have been told that to get strong, to pull up your bootstraps, you know, all those kind of nonsensical statements. And we're finally starting to see a change. But I was part of that group. I didn't want to admit that I I needed help. Um, and, And, you know, Andy, because of people like you who are willing to expose the need for mental health help in America today, we are having inroads like we've never seen before. You know, you're such a robust, strong guy. Uh, I bet people never suspect in a million years of uh, your background. You're a hundred percent correct. Yeah, it's as <laughs> simple as that, right? <laughs> you know, no one. As a matter of fact, there was only one person. My brother, Terry, younger brother, Terry, that knew of my serious addictions and knew of my challenges. I hid them from everyone, Andy. Uh, You know, my mom and dad, when I told them I was going to a treatment center, now this is a long time ago, they, they said a treatment center for what? And I said, alcoholism. And they said, why? 
yeah. <laughs> I go, well, guys, you, you go to a treatment center for alcoholism because you're an alcoholic. And they looked at me and they said, we had never seen a sign. And that's how manipulative us alcoholics and addicts can be. We can be very, very crafty in hiding our addictions, Andy. That must have been a, a tough admission for you. At first it was, oh my God. You know, I, as a matter of fact, I didn't say anything for a year. You know, after I had the failed suicide attempt and went into the treatment center, I didn't make it public for a year. I wanted to make sure that I could actually permanently heal my addictions and I did and then once I permanently healed them I started to share it with the world and today with you you know there isn't a question Andy I won't answer I have no shame I have no guilt because I realize this every time I share this story I hopefully open up the minds of a man or a woman that needs help and they get it and that makes my life totally worthwhile Boy, that says it all right there. And why is there such a, a myth about and shame about mental health? And then will we ever get over it? You know, well, we are moving through it. Now, this is a great question, too. Let me let me tell you this. When I first started in my work in counseling, 90 percent of my clients were female. Now, that was 1979, 1980. In 2023, it's 60-40. 40% of my clients are men, 60%. We are seeing massive increases, Andy. More from David on Friday. Now, I just wanted to say this, and before we do go, I just can't get enough of a veteran world champion surfer, Sean Thompson, who is on a top 10 greatest surfers of all time list, has issued a new book on overcoming life's obstacles, drawing on the painful lesson of losing a child and the strength that he required to becoming a sports leader. So I was a professional surfer. I competed on the Pro Tour for 16 years, won 19 major pro events, became a world champion, helped build the professional surfing circuit with, with a group of my mates from Australia and Hawaii, helped build the surfing industry. I started my first surfing brand called Instinct when I was uh, 22 years old, which grew into a, a nice size international brand sold in 13 countries. I called it Instinct because what I was really good at at surfing was riding inside the tube, inside the tunnel of the wave, which is sort of the essential surfing experience. And the best tube rides happen when you operate on Instinct. Thompson and the Surfer in the Sage and a guide to survive and ride life's waves. It is a surfing metaphor to breaking waves of life, including loss, depression, aging, relationship changes. And I want to thank you for supporting this show. If you like or learn something new, I want to tell you three ways that you can support the show and keep Let's Talk going. Number one, get yourself subscribed. Every week, I'm bringing inspirational guests who can teach us something or have something interesting to share. So take a moment, hit that subscribe button. And number two, this is the ultimate way to support Let's Talk, and it takes less than a minute. You can write something short and sweet like, I love the show. It has changed your life. It's something that you learn from it. And I am not exaggerating that I read reviews every day, and every single one, whether short or long, it means everything to me. And the more reviews means the higher we rank in all those algorithms, which means bigger guests. So take a minute to write a review. And now three, just share the show with friends. Just hit that share button. You know, we live stream Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I'm eternally grateful. Thank you so much for supporting Let's Talk about productivity, positivity, and happiness.